As we listen now to an American medley, you're going to be hearing Shenandoah, The Water is Wide, then a Shaker song, Simple Gifts, and finally, Grand Old Flag. Uh, I want to call in Professor Stephen Ambrose, who is standing by. You will still be seeing what is going on out there, and we'll keep the music uh, softly behind us as we're talking. Professor Ambrose, as, as you listen to those two eulogies from two men who, of course, knew him in entirely different capacities, just two of the faces of Richard Nixon, you want to add something to what we've already heard? I'm struck most by looking at that house, Ted. His father built that house with his own hands. It's the California equivalent of a log cabin. And now look here, the whole world has come to pay respect uh, to this man. His mother, Hannah, would sometimes go for years without a new dress. The family never ate in a restaurant. And just behind that house rise the mountains with the snow on them, and Nixon never got there until he was a college student. He didn't get down to the seaside. Senator Dole hit it on the head. This man came from a family that emphasized work and struggle. And now here the whole world is to, to pay their respect. I think, is, I think Senator Dole hit the theme very well. This is an only in America story. As, as we're looking at these pictures, uh, Professor Ambrose, there's a picture of Ed Nixon, the, uh, the late president's brother. A great deal of family resemblance there, and I couldn't help but think as I was watching the two women who are his daughters, uh, Tricia Nixon, who looks so much like her father. Uh, and there was a moment there where Julie Nixon Eisenhower was pursing her lips a little bit, and it was so reminiscent of her mother. Yes, yes, that's right. And it's, it's just such a nice feeling right now to know that he's going in beside Pat, here where he was born, in this part of America that he came from. He was, in so many ways, the quintessential Californian. You can't help but wonder what goes through the minds of the, of the presidents who are sitting there on the front row, the four who have already served their terms and of course President Clinton who will be coming up in just a few moments to uh, deliver his eulogy. There are certain things I suppose that only those five men can understand about the, the loneliness of office and about the presidency and no matter what the difference is in terms of their politics, in terms of their worldview, take a look there. There is uh, Something that was sent, a uh, floral wreath that was sent by Boris Yeltsin. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to wonder what these <coughs> are, of course, is uh, Mrs. Ford, President Ford. The loneliness and isolation of high command, and no matter how bitter they were as rivals during their active political careers, they have that link that no one else knows what it's like. Nixon used to talk to Lyndon Johnson about that. And, uh, Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon spent an awful long time battling each other in the most partisan fashion, saying the most terrible things about each other. But after Nixon became president and Johnson was a former president, they established a quite warm relationship based on exactly what you're talking about right now that only they knew what it was like to have to make those decisions. Professor Ambrose, that's the, uh, that's the end of the musical interlude. And now Governor Pete Wilson, uh, the governor of California, will be delivering a eulogy.